Today, we're gonna overclock a Raspberry Pi 4. Stay tuned. The Pi 4 is the fastest Raspberry Pi to date, and it's the best option as a desktop replacement because of how fast it is. But what would make the Raspberry Pi 4 even better is if we could make it even faster. And today, we're gonna do that by overclocking it. The Raspberry Pi 4 is based on the Cortex A72 processor. According to ARM, this processor is capable of sustaining 2.5 gigahertz while staying under the power budget of a regular smartphone. So that means that we should be able to get a lot more performance out of the processor than comes stock. And to do that, let me show you how. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is open up a terminal window. And in this terminal, we want to check our firmware version. And to do that, we're going to type sudo rpi-eeprom-update. Now, when we enter this command, it's going to tell us what our current firmware is and what the latest firmware is. Now, I have the latest firmware already, but if you don't, what you can do is if you just add a dash A to the command, it will actually go and update your firmware. Now, a warning here, before you run this command, make sure that there's no chance that you're gonna lose power or anything else because this can brick your Raspberry Pi really quick. I also wouldn't recommend doing this if you've already overclocked your Raspberry Pi. So I would set all your overclock settings back to stock before running this command, just in case the overclock that you're currently using has stability issues. So now that we've already done that, let me move on to how we actually overclock this thing. So what you wanna do is type CD to change directory and then go to your boot partition. Now in your boot partition, we want to edit the config text. And to do that, we type sudo nano config text. And this is going to open up the nano text editor. So we scroll down. to our overclock settings here. And I have these all set to default right now. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna need over voltage and arm frequency. And basically you play with these two settings until you get a stable overclock. I tried several different overclocks and my maximum speed I was able to get was 2.3 gigahertz. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a small overclock right now. We're gonna to go to 17 and then we're gonna do the over voltage to one. And then what you want to do is once you set these, you hit control O and then enter to save the config file. And then you hit control X to exit out. And then you type reboot to reboot your Raspberry Pi. Now, as the Raspberry Pi reboots, if by any chance your settings didn't work and the Raspberry Pi doesn't come up like it was supposed to, then Luckily, we can always pull the SD card out in order to change these settings on the computer. And I'll show you how to do that right now. In the event that your Raspberry Pi did not boot up after you changed the config file, it's easy to recover from. And trust me, you're gonna have to get used to it because it's gonna happen a lot as you play around with your overclocking settings. The first thing you need to do is take the SD card out of the Raspberry Pi and put it into a USB card reader. And then we'll take this card reader and we'll plug it into a computer so we can fix the config file settings. And let me show you how to do that. The first thing you wanna do is plug the USB drive into a computer. And then you may get this warning here telling you that you need to format the disk. Whatever you do, don't do it. It's a trap. It's a trap. For some reason, Microsoft is kind of arrogant and thinks that every file system that isn't a Windows file system should be formatted. So whatever you do, close that and don't do it. So what we're going to want to do is open our file explorer, go to this PC, and then we're going to want to go into this drive right here, the drive that says boot. So we open this up and we want the config text right here. So we're gonna open this up and we're gonna scroll down to our overclocking settings that we had just set. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is change these to a setting that has worked in the past or the last setting that we had before the problem came up. Or what you can do alternatively is you can just comment them out completely and then boot the Raspberry Pi back up and it should fire up at stock speeds at that point. So we're gonna close this and save it. And then we're gonna go back to this PC and we're gonna eject the USB drive. 
and that's it. You should be able to put your SD card back into your Raspberry Pi and it should fire up like normal. Once you get your Raspberry Pi booted back into Raspbian, now we can do some stability checks to make sure that our overclock is going to work. Let me show you how to do that now. So the first thing we're going to want to do is open up two terminal windows here. And I'm going to put these side by side. And then in one of these windows, I'm going to run a script that I wrote just to make this job easier for me. I'll leave a link to this script on my website in the show notes. So to run this, we're going to type watch because we want the script to run over and over again. And right now it's telling us what our current clock speed is, our current voltage, as well as our CPU and GPU temperatures. So now in the other terminal window, we want to run a program called StressNG. And this program is going to run the processor up to 100%, and you can run it for extended periods of time to see how stable your system is. Now to install this program, what you do is type sudo apt install stress ng mesa dash uti ls now by running this command right here it will install the speed ng program now i've already installed it so obviously it didn't install anything for me so to run it what you're going to do is you're going to type stress ng and then you're going to use dash c for cpu and then I usually send 80 processes to it. So once we hit enter, now that's gonna work away in that terminal and you'll be able to see the temperature rise in this one as well as see the clock speed max out. Now the Raspberry Pi typically runs at a variable clock speed. You can change this and force it to run turbo all the time, but I wouldn't recommend doing that because if you use the force turbo setting as well as the overvoltage setting, you'll actually void your warranty and there's actually a warranty bit on the Pi that will trip and you won't be able to get a warranty ever on it. So. I would avoid using that. There's nothing wrong with having a variable clock speed and I haven't seen it affect performance at all. So now while this runs, and I would typically let this run for about 45 minutes. And while it's running, this is where you're gonna actually check the stability of the overclock that you just did. When I was doing this, typically it would lock up or crash or something unexpected would happen during this time if I had the voltage set too low for the clock speed that I was actually running it at. Now here's the thing, you want the voltage to be as low as physically possible for the clock speed that you're running. So you don't want to overdo the voltage because that's just going to increase your temperatures through the roof. So make sure to keep the voltages as low as possible and if you get instability, raise them up slowly until the system becomes stable. Now let's look at what performance we gained by overclocking the Raspberry Pi. In my testing, I was able to get a stable overclock at 1.7 GHz, 2 GHz, 2.1 GHz, and 2.3 GHz. Your results may be different, and it depends on a lot of things. For one, it depends on what cooling you're using. If you're not using adequate cooling, you're not going to be able to get a stable overclock at the higher clock speeds. Also, it depends a lot on the silicon lottery, unfortunately. It just depends on how good of a chip you happen to get on the Raspberry Pi that you currently have. However, I would stick with the overclock that you can get the most stable at the temperature that's reasonable for your use. So let's look at some benchmarks and see how well the Raspberry Pi performed at the different clock speeds that I was able to get out of it. For single core performance, we got a 12% improvement at 1.7 gigahertz, all the way up to a 49% improvement on 2.3 gigahertz. The improvement was pretty consistent throughout the board. At 2.1 gigahertz, being about 34%, while 2 gigahertz was about a 28% improvement. Multi-core performance showed a 13% improvement at 1.7 gigahertz, all the way up to a 42% improvement at 2.3 gigahertz. And just like single core performance, the multi-core was pretty consistent throughout the board as well, with a 34% improvement at 2.1, with a 29% improvement at 2 GHz. Memory performance also improved, with an 11% improvement at 1.7 GHz, all the way up to a 41% improvement at 2.3 GHz. As before, it was pretty consistent throughout the board at a 33% improvement at 2.1 GHz and a 28% improvement at 2 GHz. 
Now these scores were all based on synthetic benchmarks, so I wanted to see how this thing performed in a real life, real world situation. So I re-encoded a 16 minute video in Handbrake from 1080p to 720p to see how long it would take at each of these clock speeds. And the results I got were, at 1.7 gigahertz, we got about a 9% improvement, all the way up to a 31% improvement at 2.3 gigahertz. And just like before, the real world tests were really consistent with the synthetic benchmarks with 25% improvement at 2.1 gigahertz and a 21% improvement at two gigahertz. So is it worth overclocking your Pi 4? You know, I gotta say, not only is it worth it, but if you don't do it, you're missing out on all that free performance that's just there for the taking. So yeah, it's definitely worth doing it. We saw almost 50% improvements in some tests. So yeah, I would definitely take the opportunity to overclock your Pi 4. Now, not everyone is gonna be able to get to 2.3 gigahertz like I did. Unfortunately, you're playing the silicon lottery when it comes to overclocking a CPU. Some CPUs just won't do it. And it's gonna depend on your cooling as well. You need to have a good cooling solution in order to hit those speeds. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna leave all the settings that I use to get to the clock speeds that I benchmarked in this video. I'll put those in the show notes. Share the clock speeds that you reached in the comments below. I'd love to see what kind of performance you guys are getting out of your Pyth. And if somebody gets over 2.3, let me know because I tried and I simply could not get over 2.3 gigahertz. So if this video was helpful to you, then please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I post a new video every week. Have a great day.